Poems Every Child Should Know, edited by Mary E. Burt. Section 71, read for LibriVox.org by Kara Schallenberg. This section contains the following poems. Life, I Know Not What Thou Art. Mercy. Polonius's Advice. A Fragment from Mark Antony's Speech. And The Skylark. Part 6 continued. Life, I know not what thou art. Life, I know not what thou art, but know that thou and I must part, and when, or how, or where we met, I own to me's a secret yet. Life, we've been long together, through pleasant and through cloudy weather. Tis hard to part when friends are dear, perhaps twill cost a sigh, a tear. Then steal away, give little warning, choose thine own time. Say not good night, but in some brighter clime, bid me good morning. A. L. Barbold Mercy Mercy, an excerpt from The Merchant of Venice, Polonius's advice from Hamlet, and Antony's speech from Julius Caesar, all fragments from Shakespeare, 1564 to 1616, find a place in this book because a well-known New York teacher, one who is unremitting in his efforts to raise the good taste and character of his pupils, says, A book of poetry could not be complete without these extracts. The quality of mercy is not strained. It droppeth as the gentle rain from heaven upon the place beneath. It is twice blessed. It blesseth him that gives and him that takes. Tis mightiest in the mightiest. It becomes the throned monarch better than his crown. His sceptre shows the force of temporal power, the attribute to awe and majesty, wherein doth sit the dread and fear of kings. But mercy is above his sceptred sway. It is enthroned in the hearts of kings. It is an attribute to God himself, and earthly power doth then show likest gods, when mercy seasons justice. Shakespeare, from The Merchant of Venice. Polonius's Advice See thou character, give thy thoughts no tongue, nor any unproportioned thought his act. Be thou familiar, but by no means vulgar. The friends thou hast, and their adoption tried, grapple them to thy soul with hoops of steel. But do not dull thy palm with entertainment of each new-hatched, unfledged comrade. Beware of entrance to a quarrel, but, being in, bear it that the posed may beware of thee. Give every man thine ear, but few thy voice. Take each man's censure, but reserve thy judgment. Costly thy habit as thy purse can buy, but not expressed in fancy, rich, not gaudy for the apparel oft proclaims the man. Neither a borrower nor a lender be, for loan oft loses both itself and friend, and borrowing dulls the edge of husbandry. This above all, to thine own self be true, and it must follow, as the night the day, thou canst not then be false to any man. Shakespeare. From Hamlet. A fragment from Mark Antony's speech. This was the noblest Roman of them all. All the conspirators, save only he, did that they did in envy of great Caesar. He only, in a general honest thought, and common good to all, made one of them. His life was gentle, and the elements so mixed in him, that nature might stand up and say to all the world, This was a man. Shakespeare, from Julius Caesar. The Skylark Bird of the wilderness, blithesome and cumberless, sweet be thy matin o'er moorland and lee. Emblem of happiness, blessed is thy dwelling-place, O oh, to abide in the desert with thee. Wild is thy lay, and loud, far in the downy cloud, 
Love gives it energy, love gave it birth. Where on thy dewy wing, where art thou journeying? Thy lay is in heaven, thy love is on earth. O'er fell and fountain sheen, o'er moor and mountain green, O'er the red streamer that heralds the day, Over the cloudlet dim, over the rainbow's rim, Musical cherub, soar, singing away. Then, when the gloaming comes, low in the heather blooms, Sweet will thy welcome and bed of love be. Emblem of happiness, blessed is thy dwelling-place, O oh, to abide in the desert with thee. Thomas Hogg End of section 71, read by Kara Schallenberg, on January 13, 2007, in Oceanside, California.